Hi guys and welcome back to the channel. Today I've got the garage review for the British Tier 9 TD, the FV4004, the Conway. Now this is another tank suggestion, so I'm going to give a little shout out to Spyro2486 because this is the tank that you asked for. And it's it's an okay tank. It's an okay TD. It's not as bad as it used to be. It used to be bloody awful. Five degrees of gun depression on this tank, and it used to only have one gun. It used to be terrible. So we're going to have two ace tanker replays on this tank after the review. With both guns, because that's one thing this tank has, and that's two guns that can be used in two different ways, and they're both competitive. But one is definitely better, I'm putting that out there. So, let's get into it. So, you get the 120mm AT gun L1A1 and the BL 5.5 inch gun. So, you get the 120mm stock, and you have to unlock the BL 5.5 inch to unlock the FE 4005. This gun is definitely better than the 5.5 inch. Okay, the DPM on this thing is second is second only to the Tortoise, I believe. It's unbelievably good. Yeah, Tortoise is way better, but it's it's unbelievably good gun. 0.32 accuracy, which sometimes it really doesn't feel like it's 0.32 accuracy. It does love a good miss sometimes. And you sit there going, but you've, you've got 0.32 accuracy. How are you missing that? 1.98 second aim time, which is fantastic. Got 259 pen, 326 premium pen, which again is very, very good. The rate of fire, like I say, fantastic DPM. It's got 380 meters view range, which is good. This, this tank has 380 meters view range, which is really good for a TD. It means you don't have to run binocs. You can run vents and optics, and if you're running food, you get you get way to the well. You basically get to the view range that is effective, pretty much. You go way above 445. I think you get to about 470 odd, and it just means that you don't you're not reliant on sitting still and setting up a binoc binocs to see people, and you don't get. Well, you do get out spotted, but you don't get out spotted by much. And like I say, it doesn't leave you vulnerable to the fact that you can't see people unless you sit still, which obviously makes you vulnerable in itself because it means you go very stationary and easy target to hit. But like I say, if you want to use a gun and you want to use this tank effectively, this is probably the best one. But for me, I prefer this gun, and that is purely because it hits hard, and that is me all over. So if you like TDs that hit hard and not tanks that sort of fire fast and have to peak more to fire more often to do damage, then this is the gun for you. 260 standard pen, which is good. It's not brilliant, but it's good. It does get Hesh. 200 pen Hesh for 770 alpha. Now that is very, very nice. It can be very effective and very meme -y. But with the amount you see tier 10 sometimes, it's not as good when you see a lot of tier 8s this can the hash can be very 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 good dpm is not the best at 417 the reload is very slow but it's the way it is and then you get to the aim time and the accuracy which is way worse than the 120 millimeter 2.4 aim time instead of 1.9 and 0.38 instead of 0.32 now obviously that completely changes the play style of the tank you go from the type that wants to be sat there well, basically farming shots down range to a tank that wants to be sort of not peekaboom, but wants to be slapping. But you you want to be playing a bit closer to the front with this gun because the accuracy is not the best, so you're not going to hit as often. But you can also hit people hard and pull back. You're not exposing yourself. You're not making yourself more vulnerable as often as you would with the other gun. But that. But the fact that it's got 600 alpha is why I love this this gun because it hits hard. In terms of camo, it's got 15% camo, which is not that good. It's not good for a TD. 15% camo. That's that's getting onto some of the heavy tanks and probably lower end of the heavily armored medium tanks. It's not a tank that you want to be sitting at the back sniping with. 
it's not one of those tanks. Its playstyle is more of that of a medium tank. Camo net is definite is a definite no on this tank because even though obviously I know the camo is worse and you might say oh you know so you want you're saying the camo is bad you want to make the camo better since it's a CD with a camo net but no it honestly if you're gonna get spotted in this tank doesn't matter if you've got a camo net it's it's camo is not the best so what you want to do is just basically get the crew to be trained as camo to make it better and then try and make everything else better like I have here so I've got a caliber uh, gun rammer improved vents and code optics so that in itself means my view range will be very good my reloads is better good as it can be with those two and food also makes all the rest of the gun performance better its top speeds 40 kilometers an hour which isn't great but it's good enough that you can get to the positions you want to be the horsepower per ton is also fantastic at 18.99 it may as well be 19 horsepower per ton it means you can get to positions well, you get up to your top speed anyway, you get up to 40 kilometers an hour very easily. And it can be pretty mobile when you need it to. The other thing with this tank and its guns is that this BL 5.5 inch gun doesn't get a fully traversable turret. Your turret will only turn 90 degrees each way with this gun. If you want a, a tank with the turret that goes all the way round, that's the 120 mm gun. Because with this gun, you can your turret rotates the full way round, whereas this one, it doesn't. Overall, this tank used to be terrible. And it was mainly owed to the fact that it got five degrees of gun depression on such a tall chassis that you just if anything got close to you, you could not aim down. And like Soviet medium tanks could side hug it, and you could never put your gun low enough to shoot them. And that was a pain in the ass. But then they buffed it, and it's now got two, uh, 10 degrees of gun depression, which is fantastic. It means you can go on a ridge line and work it quite nicely. Obviously, you are quite tall, so you do expose yourself a lot anyway, and the head of the tank is quite big, so there's quite a lot above the gun that people can shoot when you're coming over. But it means it's just more flexible. And the flexibility helps it a hell of a lot. But overall, it's a pretty you know, pretty good tier 9 tank. Oh, and it's probably better to go for this tank before the Tortoise. And that is because of the gun. 120mm AT Gun L1A1 is the exact same gun as the top one on the Tortoise. So if you want to save yourself the pain, I mean obviously the DPM on this Type B barrel is fantastic. It's absolutely unbelievable. It's like a machine gun. But if you want to save yourself the pain of playing this thing stock with that gun, play the Conway because then you can get this gun unlocked for yourself on the Tortoise. And obviously the, as well as that, with this AT line, guns like the 20 pounder Type B barrel and Type A comes stock on the Charioteer or will be unlocked for you on the other series of tanks like this AT. It starts off with a 17 pounder. I think you get the Type A barrel fully upgraded on the AT7 but then you'll get the Type B barrel which is fully unlocked on here which is your second gun on the Charioteer fully unlocked for you again which means you're not playing stock as much with this tank and that makes it nice. That's why I, I kind of like the interchangeability of tanks on each line having similar guns and similar modules to unlock. So obviously like it's got the Rolls Royce Griffin engine as well which I'm not sure. Yeah it doesn't get on there. Oh but yeah your engines are also the same. So you unlock the Conway, you'll have everything ready for the Tortoise. You literally don't really have to pay much XP. Part, I think, only the tracks. You will literally only have to pay XP for the tracks on the Tortoise. It will be fully upgraded if you go to the Conway. So it's well worth doing that. So like I say, overall, the Conway, nice TD. It's quite enjoyable to play nowadays. A lot better than it used to be. And the 120mm gun is definitely the one that you want to use. But I'm an idiot and I use the 5.5. So as always, everybody, I will see you in the replays. So here we are, Conway Big Gun. 
I think I started recording this replay a little bit into the battle. Not long has gone, so you've not missed anything. But I think I just forgot to hit record and then was like, oh, crap. Hit record. So this was on Sinza's stream, I believe, from quite a while ago. And again, I've had this stocked up probably in the folders for a little while. It's just, again, it's number one, playing the Conway. And number two, actually doing well in the Conway. Now, it's not a tank that I, you know, I can, I can look at it objectively and say, yeah, it, it's it's an alright TD. It's an alright tier 9 TD. It's, it's pretty okay. But it's not one that I utterly enjoy. And I think that's mainly, and probably because, number one, I use this gun most of the time, which can be derpy. And number two, because its, mem it's memory is forever tainted by what it used to be like, which was bloody awful. Oh, oh, I just, ew. So as you see, we've loaded the Hesh, and that pen on the E4 was juicy. 794 roll. Now the Hesh, obviously, as you've seen in the review, has 200 pen, but when it pens, it's juicy. We pen the side of that Panzer 7's turret for 772. It's 770 Alpha, so those were both high rolls, and it's just delightful. Because obviously you think about it, it's got about 20 more damage than an Object 704. Because the Object 704 has 750 Alpha. Well, this has 770 with 200 pen. Sure, it's not got the great pen <coughs> that the 704 has. Like, it's like 280 something, 290 something on its standard. But it's 770, so it's 20 more. And it's also high explosive. So when it pens it wrecks and of course obviously as well since it's quite a relatively high caliber gun you don't have to pen all the time to do some serious damage now obviously when we hit a super the 60 tp in the top of his turret and it is a super heavy but we did over, just over 100 odd damage to it but like i say when it when it pens obviously the, the shots are juicy but this conway yeah i'd say it's it's tainted look at that shot oh through his little engine deck box thing oh beautiful so some of the shots in this game are pure in this game is pure means that i'm having with this hash i just decided to roll with it and we're doing it and it's really paying off but yeah anyway like i was saying the the memory of this tank and the way i play had to play it when it was the original thing it's just it's painful. Five degrees was awful on this tank, and yeah, it's now not that bad, I wouldn't say. It's not one of the best tier 9 TDs, don't get me wrong, but it's not one of the worst. But I, I prefer this gun, because I don't have to peek as much, and to be honest, when I'm in a TD, I like to slap people hard rather than cut them. That's just the way, that's my preference in TDs. Well, like the T30, because I slap hard. Now, if we'd been firing AP, then we would have penned and killed that are you? But unfortunately, it didn't happen. We're now out of Hesh, so we're only down to the standard rounds. The C95 V6 is in the open, and black. We'll smash him in the side. Now, obviously, this replay is pre 5.0 as well. Like I say, I've had it for quite a while in the bank. But nothing's changed about the Conway, so. There's not much difference really. So that position you saw me go to is actually for our spawn is a very very powerful position. I think it's both on encounter and I think it's on assault as well because we've got similar pretty much the same spawn. That position is very strong because you get shots like you've just like you've just seen me use all over the place. You can get nice shots across. You can get nice shots of people crossing. Nice shots down below. It's great. It's very easy to get caught out there, granted, because if they decide to look back at you, it's quite hard to get safe. But at the same time, you know, you should be alright, because you can pull back behind the ridge lines. So that game ends there, and like I say, it's not particularly special, but it's very hashtastic, and some of those shots deserved... They really deserved to be shown. It was... It just went one of those ones where you pen and you go, oof. 
is great. Two two shot that e4. Look at that. Commander loader his turret. Oh, delightful. And I, yes, I like the big gun because I like to slap people, and I don't have to peek as much and stuff like that. That's just what I prefer in a TD. But the gun is derpy and it's not the best. And obviously the pen isn't the best either. With I mean, 260 on the standard is, is a good standard round. But then the fact that you've got no premium round to deal with the more super heavies. And 260 against super heavies can be a wee bit dodgy here and there. So, now we're on Thief Vault 1944. And we're on Swindle Stream. And probably Turkish too. And we're using the uh, 120 millimeter. Now this is probably the better, the better gun. Now as we're playing this game, we've bumped into one of my clan mates' cars. So that's the one I've just shot in the side. Probably a waste of ammo because this thing can run out of ammo because it reloads so so very fast. The DPM is insane. But what annoys me about this gun is the fact that it it's, it's super duper accurate. But as you see in here, the shots just love to not fly where you're aiming. I've not penned him once. He's a stationary Valo. I've got 0 0.31 accuracy, I think it is. Or 0.32, like I was saying in the review. And just those shots weren't flying in it. And it just frustrates me. And this is the other reason why I always hated the Conway. Because you had an accurate gun. You only had 5 degrees of gun depression, which meant a position like I'm using right now you could barely use without overexposing and the gun for saying it was 0.32 accuracy just wouldn't hit and it was so very frustrating so that's why I always hated it, it was the one tank that I have actually skipped because I've just gone nah no I'm not doing this I'm not doing this, I'm out and went straight to the FV4005 and that was my first 183 gun before I unlocked the Death Star because again I didn't want to go through the tortoise and I was just like that but anyway take it in, take how quick this gun fires and this position we're using is good, obviously we've got a slim to nothing shot on this AMX so we're thinking about it but it's, it's probably not going to happen, we are spotting him so we are getting his assistance but yeah take in how quick the gun fires because the gun is rapid fire it's Unbelievably, it's exactly like it's just a turreted tur tortoise for the DPM. But obviously, the tortoise is way better DPM. But yeah, so like I say, this gun is like a machine gun. We're just gonna keep poking shots at these guys. I think there's someone else up there with that 432, but we get on night. Yeah, there we go. It's an AMX 5100. We slap him, and again, look how quick it's reloading. He's thinking, Oh god, I've got to get out now. And then we could have damaged him there, but the gun said no. Me sat still, so finish him off. And there's this 432 that we can still see and shoot. And we're hoping it'll pull back into position we can get a shot at him. But it's unfortunately not happening. So now is the time to move forward. We've got the guys on the left that we want to kind of get behind. And we've got this chisel. Now this chisel is going to be a, can be a pain. Especially the position he's in, but he's got more things to focus uh, to focus on, like Turkey just shuts him down. So we are now in this position against these guys. We've got a shot at this 53 TP, so we're not turning that down. We're only on the APCR now, that's all we've got left. Which means that we are going to have no trouble penning people unless we get random shots like that, which fly into the tracks rather than the lower plate. That guy's getting bullied. We managed to shut him down, slap him. And we've got some nice shots now down there. These guys, if we just move out a little bit further, we should be able to shoot them. But we are winning very heavily. So the likelihood of me getting to get a more, another shot at someone is quite unlikely. If physics lets us up, there we go. So there's the guy on the right in the medium tank as well. He's also like down in the dip. And we're going to see if we can pop up and get a shot at this 140 because he's our likeliest source of damage now. I could have turned and shot the light tank on the hill, but I've decided this, this 140 is the one we're going to get. So here we are, pretty much for the most part, a fully aimed shot on the 140. Unfortunately, on his side, it tracked him only. But we got all that juicy assistance. 
which is nice. So we end up finishing the game, not actually managing to get another shot. But I thought that game, as well as nice, we get a good amount of assistance for spotting from that position. We got a nice, nice bit of tracking. The nice tanker, Confederate. I thought that game showed why I'm not a big fan of the 120 as much. Even though it is the better gun, 21 shots fired, 17 hits, 10 pens. Because it kept flying high or flying low. And it's just a gun that frustrates me. But as always, everybody, thank you very much for watching. I'll see you next time.